Day Communications. I'd like to welcome everyone to the March 19th, 2024 regular meeting of the Jackson County Board of Education. We do have some really good presentations tonight. We'll start with item 2A, which is my key elementary school presentation. Mr. Tripp, whenever you're ready. All right, it's always uh, great when I get to come out and brag on my school. Um, this time of the year, it's kind of tough to get a, a, a uh, I know you'd probably rather hear from kids, but this time, of the, this time of the year, it's really tough to get a group together with baseball going on and things like that. But uh, so I, I want to just kind of highlight some of the things that's been going on over the past year and kind of hit on some of the projects that we've been doing. If you got any questions, feel free to, uh, to stop me. Um, one thing we got this past week that I was kind of surprised about and honored, we got a little, uh, uh, a banner in the mail and it, it basically recognized us as one of the best elementary schools across the country. And, um, I mean, I knew that, you know, that we had a good school and I'm super proud of our school, but to have the recognition, you know, a lot of times they'll send these things out. They want your, they want your money. Send us $50 and we'll send you a, a banner, you know, and, and they sent us one without sending the $50. So I was kind of honored about that. But, uh, as you can see, we were, we were ranked as one of the top 35 schools, elementary schools in the state. Uh, 750, I believe, uh, elementary schools to be one of those top 35 um, was a great accomplishment. And, um, you know, I'm honored to have and work with the staff that I work with, the support staff, and the students. I mean, uh, uh, good, group, good group of people. Um, and then, as you all know, I think uh, Ms. Norris went over this a couple board meetings ago about you know the rankings of the schools and all this stuff obviously blue is the the highest level and we was um, we was able to come out with a uh, blue school rating and, uh, and actually jackson county had two of those i think the high school and and the key both were considered blue schools so uh great accomplishments but i know you all heard about that before um give me one second here all right, we'll talk a little bit about proficiency. Uh, a lot of people kind of probably don't really understand what it means to be proficient. I have to explain this to my colleagues all the time in Frankfurt because we all the time throw around, you know, that the state average in reading is 47% proficiency or math, 42%. And what a lot of people don't realize is that proficiency, in order to be proficiency, that's better than average. So even though some of those numbers may look not great, it, proficiency is a hard thing to get to. Myself as a student, I probably would have been proficient in math, but there's no way I would have been a proficient reading student. So I want to kind of break that down a little bit, kind of show you a little bit where we rank, and then I want to brag on our district, our, our county, our elementary schools. So like at McKee and reading, the state average was 47%. And we were 71%. And our district was a 58%. All right, so, you know, things that we're doing at the elementary level are, um, are working, are working. Uh, in math, not near as high a percentage, but we were 57% in math. Uh, the, the county average elementary was 54, and the state average was 42. So even though 57 is a little bit lower than, than 71, we're still um, quite a bit ahead of the, the state average. Social studies, 66% up to the state average of 42%. Combined writing, which uh, is grammar along with on-demand writing, 68%, state average 43%. Science, 68%, state average 35%. So it, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out that things that we're doing at McKee and also at the other two elementary schools are working. And obviously it's something we want to continue to work on and strive on. But I wanted to hone in on that. Being proficient is hard to get there. We throw that word around a lot. 
as anybody should be proficient. But actually, the way it's set up, especially with a norm reference test, you know the way 50 percentile works. In a group of 100 people, you know, that 50 percentile would be right in the middle. So you're, you're better than half the people that's, that you're being tested with. And the group that you're with or your group that you're tested with may change that number. So like if, let's say I, I'm comparing myself with a group of people who are uneducated. All right, and I'm, in, and I'm proficient, then I, you know, my number, that, that number of proficiency could be a little bit lower. But then when you put yourself with a group of students who are really educated well, then that proficiency changes. So that's kind of what I try to want to get across. Proficiency is a nice goal to have, but it is a lofty goal. So um, kind of share that with you a little bit. All right. Throughout the year, when I, when I started this year off, I sat down with my youth service center director and I told her, I was like, we need to include our stakeholders more this year. We need to include our parents. We need to include our community. We need to include anybody that we can to get them back in our schools. Since COVID, you know, while COVID was going on, we couldn't let anybody in our schools, and it was tough. So I really feel that the, the, the way that you build that culture is that you get your community, you get your all your stakeholders involved in what's going on at your school. We're not trying to do anything that we're trying to hide from parents or hide from the community. So the more that we can get them in there, the better off we are. So this year we tried to do something every single month to where we could bring people in to our buildings. And I really feel that that's been a great success. We started off in September with our grandparents' day. All right, that's where they got to come in and eat lunch with, uh, with their grandchild. I, I think we may have had Mr. Neely there at that time. But, but we had 358 grandparents attend this lunch. And it was spread out over a week. We did. We have to do, obviously, with that many grandparents and eat lunch, you'd have to do it. So we would do like kindergarten on a day, first grade on a day. It's a lot of work on everybody. My kitchen staff was ready to kill me by the end of the day or the end of the week. But to have 358 grandparents, pretty, pretty good accomplishment. We went to October. In October, we, we wanted to focus on, we had our first responders breakfast. We had, over 20, we had over 20 first responders show up, and our kids had made them uh, posters and, and wrote them letters, thanking them for what they do and all those good things. We had, all, we had the volunteer fire departments come in, uh, and uh, so we, we worked on that in October. You can see at the bottom kind of who got sponsored those. those were, that, that event there was sponsored by Frisky and Save the Children. We move on to October, and this is when we got our program um, with Partners for Rural Imp Impact, or PRI. And I don't know if, um, if you guys truly understand the great impact that this program has or not, but I want to tell you as a principal, as a parent in the schools, this is a phenomenal program. To have these resources to come in and have someone tied to your school and their job is solely to look out and try to reach out to stakeholders to include them in things that we're doing at the school level. I know I think I've seen on the agenda that maybe they may be talking later on, so I don't want to take steal their glory, but they are, it is, they are a great program, PRI is. So um, this is, they're, they're, they, they came in in October. Lexi was hired in October. So her first project was she was able to bring in an author um, to, to, to do during our uh, reading event. Then we had a Red Ribbon Week, which is basically the time where we celebrate being drug free. Anything, um, you know, that, that gets the kids excited about making good choices and, and all those good things. So that was uh, Red Ribbon Week. In November, this was during, we, we had, it's November, December actually, we've got our preschool turkey time, which was funded through Partners of Rural Impact. We had a Unite Christmas uh, float, which was happening during our McKee uh, parade, Christmas parade. And then we, this was the time also when we celebrated for our, um, our scores, our last year's KSA scores. So you can see right there in November, we're celebrating for being named one of the blue schools 
um, in the state. That's always a big day for our kids. We have that marked. We know when we're going to be doing the announcements. We build up to that till the end, uh, to that day. So that's always a big day at McKee Elementary. Here's some more pictures from our November. Uh, this the, the preschool event was a turkey time. That was a really neat um, activity that uh, the kids were able to do uh, with with some uh, stakeholder involvement. Um, getting into um, right around Christmas, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we did our our annual food drive. I talked to Joyce, and at the time she was talking about how that they wasn't able to get a lot of food this year. So um, she asked us about doing a food drive, so we was able to bring in uh, over a thousand um, food items. And if you've worked with kids at this time, the thing that's most touching there are the kids who, the kids who bring the most of these food items in are the kids who realize the importance of that food bank. You know, it, you know, I have to basically make my kid bring something in, you know, because he probably doesn't appreciate, you know, the food like some of my, some of our students do. But um, it's very warming, heartwarming to see these kids rolling in, you know, with their backpacks full of items, willing to give them to the food bank so other families and other kids can celebrate those and use those during our Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. So. That was, that's always a good event that we do, we've worked on. Our Christmas event, uh, if anybody's ever been to that, that's by far our biggest event we do throughout the year. Uh, we decorate every hall, every wall in our building is decorated from top to bottom. And um, it's, it's something that we have over 95% participation each and every year. Um, Every, every kid is there, every parent, grandpa, grandma, and we've even over the last couple of years having people come just so they can see the decorations. So it's, it's turned into a really big event for us. So that's something that, that we're, we're super proud of. Um, and then obviously in order to keep kids working hard, you have to hold them accountable. And then you have to reward them when they do good things. That's the way we, that's the way we operate. Um, so we had a we had a glow party for students who had either shown growth or reached that proficient mark on their second diagnostic, and that was the first glow party I've ever been involved with. Um, and uh, I, I will say that the kids probably see them having more fun doing that than I've done any activity we've ever done. Um, and uh, so that's something that we'll probably continue to work on and used as a reward because the kids really love the glow party. Uh, around Christmas time, we also had our Unite Club uh, making, making cards for um, uh, residents of the nursing home and also McKee Manor. Um, the way our county is split up, you know, and, and it's, you know, wide span, I think it's important that, that we, you know, I know we have the nursing home over in Amble, but I wanted to really make sure that we included things locally right there as close to school. So we went to the manor. It's the first time anybody been to the manor, she said, and I can't remember how many years. Um, and um, the residents really enjoyed getting these Christmas carols and these cards that the students had made for them. So uh, the Unite Club is another new thing we've done this year. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to have that going along too, which obviously you know you're not. It's all about making good choices, not doing drugs, um, getting kids involved in something other than drugs. And, and we know as educators that, you know, sports may not be your thing. You know, the biggest advantage of sports is, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you busy to where you don't have a chance don't have that opportunity to maybe make some bad choices. Well, the Unite Club kind of alter, kind of kind of goes after kids who maybe like archery or, or, you know, gives them something to look forward to. Maybe some of the kids that's not playing the sports, they've got another activity to keep them busy, keep them motivated, and to help them make those, those good choices. Something that 
I know you can't tell by looking at me, but I love donuts. So something that um, we, we did this year for the first time is I told um, Ms. Brooke, my youth service center, that I'd seen a school do it last year in Bell County. Uh, one of my good friends is principal down there. I seen, I followed him on Facebook and I seen that he had done a Donuts with Dad program. And I was like, man, I want to try that and see how that goes. It's one of those things we decided we were going to do it in the library thinking that we might have 20 dads or 30 dads, maybe 50 dads at the most. We had 127 dads show up for Donuts with Dads. Now, my youth service center director, whenever we were talking, we had budgeted five dozen of donuts. I told her, I was like, listen, five dozen I think we'll do. You know. So luckily, we had had our we had our food service. We talked to Betty, my cook, and we talked about we want all our kids to do the same thing. I you know, if you come to McKee or you go, you know, I think it's important that every kid gets treated the same, no matter who you are, no matter what you got. So I was like, even though maybe some of these kids don't have a dad, I want them to have a donut too. So luckily, Betty had made some, some donuts for us, and we was able to, 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 to buy her some donuts off of them to get those to finish out her. So we had a great, great program with our donuts for Dad. And uh, we kind of did it like we used to have, there used to be a program called All-Star Dads, and, or All-Pro Dads. And that was funny by Save the Children back when I first started becoming principal. And I loved that program because it was it was kind of like a devotional that you talk to you would talk to dads about the importance of being a dad and how our job is to guide our children and teach them what's right and be that role model that we need them to be. So that's kind of what I used this program for. I got to I got to talk to all the dads and talked about the the importance of being that role model dad. That important. The importance of being someone that's there to protect your kids, teach them right from wrong. But uh, so 127 dads showed up for our donuts with dad, and I think I seen where Tyner done that maybe last week. So I hopefully the gap will do it later on because it is a really good program, and and, and it gives you an opportunity to get your your parents, your grandparents in the buildings, which I still think is very important to do. Um, we learned from Donuts with Dad, we knew if we we're going to have 160 <coughs> dads, we could probably multiply that by two for our moms. And as you can see, we had over, uh, had over 160 moms attend this event. Now, we've only got around, uh, we've got about counting preschool, we, we're around 400 kids, uh, preschool through five. And we've got a lot of parents down there, a lot of mommies that's got multiple kids. So 160 moms um, out of our whole entire population, I, I want to say there was probably no more than about 50 students in our whole building that did not have a mom, a grandma, or somebody come and do muffins with mom with them. So we learned, like I said, we, we did things a little different. We didn't use the library anymore. We used our library, or I'm sorry, we used our gym and our cafeteria so that we could hold more people. Once again, that was a, uh, uh, together with part, with PRI, Save the Children, Frisky, Title I, every, I mean, all hands on deck, every person, every stakeholder that we could include, we included in these type, these type of events. Once again, they're great. It gets people in our buildings. Um, and uh, so, we also had Eddie the Eagle come talk about gun safety. Um, this was a program that uh, we had to have. Parents had to be okay with this, you know, that they wanted uh, students to learn about. And, and I was a little hesitant at first. Always when you hear things like this, you're like, oh, well, they, what are they teaching? Are they teaching guns are bad? Are they teaching guns are good? Or, you know, it's always one of those things you kind of have to. So I checked with some principals in Laurel County, and they told me that it was a really good program. And it did didn't get any didn't get it didn't get too tough on guns or or too lenient on guns it was just basically if you see a gun laying around make sure an adult knows I mean that's common sense for anybody you know it wasn't saying that guns were bad or guns are you know great or they were just saying you know if you see a gun 
don't touch it. Make sure an adult knows. Make sure someone knows that you know that that gun's there. So it was a really good program, and uh, obviously, Aiden the Eagle was a big success in our school. March is our big um, Read Across mm -hmm. America week, um, and you know we had our Dr. Seuss week. We had multiple people come in. I think you can see right there. I think we had our DPP come and read. I think he's there in the center. Um, we had our jailer come and read. Um, I read to a couple classes. We had our high school um, group come down and read. Um, it was just uh, obviously trying to promote reading, trying to promote, um, you know, the, the, the importance of reading. Um, and then uh, actually today, we just added this today. Today we had a, we had a program sponsored by PRI. A uh, blacksmith, and um, obviously the day that we, the world that we live in now, it's so important that we kind of break that mindset of in order to be successful in life, you got to have a college degree. You know, when I was in school, that was kind of what I was pushed to 25 years ago. In order to be successful, in order to, you know, to have that car and to have that house and to have all these things, you had to have that college degree. Well. You know, we need to change that mindset that, you know, the world we live, you know, we need blacksmiths, we need carpenters, we need, uh, you know, we need uh, plumbers, we need electricians, we need all of these skills that, you know, you're using in your hands. So we're, we're trying to promote, um, you know, obviously career studies. Uh, our high school has done a really good job over the last five to ten years of pushing career ready. I mean, I think last year we was number one in the state over our kids being career ready, leaving our high school, which to me is just as important or maybe more so important in the area we live of students being college ready. So um, that's what that whole project there was about. Bob the blacksmith, he came in today. It was cold uh, and his fire wasn't as big as I would hope it would have been, but, uh, but they, the kids survived. They learned a lot about um, obviously blacksmiths and um, I believe if I'm not mistaken <coughs> that does conclude McKee Elementary's presentation happy to answer any questions that you have if anybody has any questions if not thank you all for having me next time I'll try to bring some kids because they'll do a much better job than me all right Yeah. Elementary school once a month. Is the muffins with mom and the donuts with dad going to try to do that every month, every couple of months, every quarter? We'll, we'll probably right now, it's probably one of those things we're just going to see. This year, we're like we going to try to do it at least. We try to do one event every single month that gets the community, gets moms or dads or grandparents into our building. So uh, I would love to get that old all pro dads back going. I know that was a Save the Children or Vista initiative back, I guess it's been probably seven years ago, it probably was, before. Uh, 16 and 17 is yeah, before, before COVID. Um, but that was a great program. I loved it. I really did. I thought it was good. But um, uh, obviously, it would be something that, that we would look at if we, if, we could, if we could do it every month. It would be great. Um, but it does, it does require a lot of planning because when we're doing that, obviously, like our, our, our moms anyway, we spread that out over like an hour in the morning. So if there's a little bit of planning, you know, you're messing up with instruction and things like that. But, but uh, maybe, maybe we could do it something once a month. But definitely we're trying to do something with getting people into our schools at least once every month. At least, at least every quarter or like sure. grading period would be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I had zero complaints on either one of our activities. The moms, even the dads that came in and they had to settle for the, the packs of white donuts. They didn't complain. They didn't complain. So, uh, but, uh, all right. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Next time on the agenda is item 2B.
received the 2024 Kentucky School Board Association banner recognition. One of our high school students actually constructed our banner for us. I'll let Amanda go ahead, then I'll step up in just a second. And the young man's name is Braden Holmes. So we're, we're very proud of Braden Holmes. We're very proud of the job he did. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. Hello. Um, the display of student design banner artwork is one of the Kentucky School Boards Association's oldest and fondest annual conference traditions. Each year, students submit their banner designs based on a theme, and the banners are then displayed at the KSBA conference. And you can see those lying in the wall here of prior years. Colorful interpretations of the conference theme are as unique as the districts from which they come. They serve as reminders of the motivation behind the members' call to public service. Since 2021, banners have been submitted digitally to KSBA. This year, Ms. Sarah McQueen, Jackson County High School business teacher, worked with the technology department to offer students the opportunity to create a banner. The theme for this year was Keys to Success. Several students participated by submitting the optional assignment. The banner that most creatively relayed the message of this year's theme was designed by Jackson County High School student Braden Holmes. Braden is a senior at JCHS. In speaking with Braden, I discovered that he really enjoys his welding class at the ATC and has aspirations to incorporate welding into his future career. It is our honor to acknowledge Braden's creatively designed KSBA banner. You can see it up here. Braden, for your efforts, so we would like to present you with a certificate. If you'll come on up. <coughs> hey, Brady. Congratulations. There's a certificate signed by myself, Mr. Neely. And the keys to success, according to Brady, and they all they're all great. Mm -hmm. Confidence, perseverance, organization, resilience, courage, attendance, preparation, integrity ambition, enthusiasm, focus, and optimism. They're all truly keys to success. Uh, Braden did a great job, and you know, we're very proud of him. And I felt it was, if not the best, one of the best banners down there, which you did great. Thank you, sir. Okay, so not only uh, do you get the certificate, but we also want to present you with your very own welding hood. I'll show that off here. for your efforts um, we would like to present you with that hood and then also the banner you created once printed will hang proudly in here amongst these other banners thank you so much for your hard work thank you <laughs> Sarah and also Andrew. You want to come over, Andrew? And I'll let you get one. Let them have the day. Yeah. You made it, didn't you? School curriculum and instruction update. We have Ms. Christy Sizemore here and also Dr. Brad Kirby, our middle school principal. So, Christy, you and Brad, whenever you're ready. Good evening, everybody. This is an update from the presentation I did in February. I want to share some more information with you along with Ms. Sizemore. We've been working proactively together um, to try to increase Jackson County Middle School's uh, academic performance. We've got a curriculum and instruction across the board. So we wanted to share some of that information, some of that work that we've been doing over the course of the last few months. Um, looking at the end of year, we know I-Ready is coming up. Um, we're looking at the week of April the 15th. 
that's our end of year IREDI assessment. And this will provide us comparisons from the middle of the year, which we took before Christmas, and then our beginning of year data, which we took in August, um, the beginning of the year. So we're, we're seeing from beginning of year to middle of the year and then to the end of the year. Um, so hopefully what we will see is, like we saw from the beginning of year to middle of year, we did see growth in reading and math across the three grade levels. Um, this data can be used to make some projections about how the end of year tests may look for us um, based on the end of year uh, I read data. Um, like I said, previous data showed the students have made gains in reading and math for all three grade levels. And we're going to do that on April 15th. And one thing we want to focus on is our positive behavioral interventions and supports, our PBIS. That's something we've worked on, especially. Um, just got a pointer in. Oh gosh, I missed it. In. Sorry. I thought that was a pointer. I got excited. So looking at chronic absenteeism, that's obviously a problem that we face across our district, not just Jackson County, but across the state and probably across the United States. Um, missing more than 10 school days, a school year is about 173 days for students. Um, so missing two of the, or 10 of those days makes a student chronically absent or absentee is a problem. So some of the things that we've tried to do at the school is we've tried to incentivize um, attendance between the grade levels. In the lobby area, I do keep a bulletin board. I have all three grades and every day I do go and put the attendance up so they can see if sixth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade. And I'm happy to report my eighth grade attendance is up. So they're actually the ones that's been winning this week, last week, and the week before, which is very odd. But the sixth grade, they're, they said they want to get it back up so they can win again. So the seventh grade, they won a few times. Right now, eighth grade is on fire. Um, one thing we've done is offered, I mentioned this in the February uh, meeting, is the offering incentives for students. One thing, some of the things that we've done, We've offered a Dairy Queen, movie passes, lunch at El Dorado, which they really like. AirPods, you know, those are very nice, for, but they're very expensive. We were able to give away a set of those in February. And the student who got those, he was super excited. I tried to say if he'd let me use them, and he wouldn't. <coughs> we want to highlight positive behaviors throughout the school year. With a, we, just one thing we do, these are some of the things, our extended breaks. Um, we've had several school dances. We've done pancake breakfast. We've offered popcorn. We've had prizes throughout the day, you know, to call students to the office or to the, to the front and say, you know, you can pick a prize. And that's something we've done in partnership with our youth service center. So it's just not the school, you know. Um, we do have relationships in, with our youth service center and PRI. So um, and that brings me to partners. And I'm not going to, I just want to mention some of the things that we've done since the February um, update. Um, they went to UK, they went to an engineer career program at UK. On a Saturday, they loaded up and went to UK, which I thought was awesome. I made a pretty good turnout. Um, kids really enjoyed that, and they got to see you know, some engineering careers. They got to go and take a tour and experience that first time being on the campus, University of Kentucky, which is a big, I think, big deal. Um, we had a health fair. That was at the Jackson County High School. We bused the students up from eighth grade to go participate in that. And one thing that's really taken off, we've worked on it before, but the PRI sort of led us support. Um, we have an Ask an Expert Tutoring Program, which is offered on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we've been able, through uh, PRI support, to add Makerspace, which is a STEM component to after school tutoring. And we went from maybe four or five kids staying, we're up to today, we had 15 this day. And one great thing I think that's really helped those numbers to go up is we've been able to offer busing. So we've had students who stayed on Tuesdays, they're transported to Tyner Post Office, and on Thursdays we have a bus that goes to the Sangat Firehouse. So I think that has really helped, you know, some kids who may not have had an opportunity otherwise to participate. So we want to continue that and hopefully to see that grow. Um, one thing I want to mention, a big initiative that we've had at the school, for our math department is our active implementation. We call it AI for short. Um, AI is the strategic and integrated approach to math education at all school levels, K through 12. So this is an evidence-based math strategy program um, that the teachers uh, participate in. We have support from the Southeast South Central Co-op, which they were here last month too. Um, 
What we're focusing on is what's called the eight mathematical standards. Um, and so the ba eight mathematical standards are based on instructional goals, based on the Kentucky Academic Standards for Math, and it encourages students to think critically about math processes, build mathematical fluency, and support mathematical discourse. And to uh, add to that a little bit, tell you a little bit how it's broken down, um, JCMS has been a part of this opportunity through the co-op since August 2022, so we've been in it for a little while. Um, we started out with what's called the district implementation team. Um, they, we try to meet monthly, and that's again with co-op personnel and district and school level. So like principals and uh, we've got a program uh, director <coughs> that meet as part of that. Then we also have recently we've added the school implementation team, which I think is the most exciting part. As the teachers, we brought the teachers in, so after we have our district implementation team in the <coughs> meeting in the morning, and the afternoons we meet with the teachers. So that's like me, uh, the ladies from the co-op, and the uh, three uh, regular math teachers and the three special ed math teachers. So they all meet and we have discussions about um, eight mathematical practices. Another initiative in the school is deeper learning. This is a school-wide initiative that supports all teachers no matter what subject they teach. And it's also a program that's brought to us through the co-op. Um, so this provides teachers with authentic learning, or students with, uh, I think it's <coughs> students. anyways, with authentic learning experiences and to help them become contributing members of the community. So we want students to leave our school when they go to high school to have, you know, a foundation so they can continue as they go through high school and whether they go to college or they go into a career path, whatever the case may be, we want to support that work. So the one big, th or the three questions that deeper learning asks are, what am I learning? So students have to be able to answer that question. What am I learning today? Why am I learning it? And how do I know I'm learning it? So those are the three big questions that we look for in deeper learning. Um, so deeper learning, this is how we rolled it out at the middle school. I miss Natasha Rader, who is our eighth grade writing teacher. Um, she is the school teacher leader for the initiative. She's worked in it for several years now. She provides in-house support to the teachers. Um, she engages with teachers in PLC meetings on a six to eight week base, uh, basis to review modules related to the initiative. And she also <coughs> attends district level professional learning throughout the school year. So she's the leader on that. Then we'll talk, we'll talk about our professional learning communities. Teachers meet regularly in POCs to discuss upcoming events, uh, as well as academic and behavioral data. POCs are composed of content-specific teachers. So some of the things that we talk about in POCs, we talk about iReady. So one thing we're looking at right now is that iReady end of year diagnostic, which I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation. Um, we're also looking at the Kentucky Summary of Assessment, which is the KSA, the big test at the end of the year, um, preparing students for success. Some of the things that we're looking at, there's the state releases, a, it's called Test Snap. This is a practice program platform that the mm -hmm. students are going on their Chromebooks, and it mimics what the actual test looks like. So they can go in, <coughs> excuse me, and they can practice what the test looks like and all subject areas so that they're tested in. We also have been looking at released items. These are provided by the state. So teachers can use those as part of the practice to prepare for the test. And also we were looking at reviewing student performance on the diagnostics from the beginning and middle of the year. School safety. I know the district released an update on its, on its uh, district page. Facebook page. <coughs> Jackson County Middle School, I'm really proud of this. Jackson County Middle School received a clean, I call it a clean bill of safety um, with Stuart Adams, who is our state safety marshal, paid an unannounced visit to the school on February the 28th. So all interior doors were locked during instruction, all exterior doors were locked. Staff visitors enter and exit the building through the main entrance. And you can see some of the procedures like visitors have to be buzzed in after being greeted by the, the intercom system. Visitors, obviously, when they come in the building, have to state, you know, why they're there, whether they check out a student, or they're there to and when people who come in to observe teachers, like students um, through a university program. So that's 
So they have to sign in, they have to wear a badge while they're in the building. So that's just part of school safety. So but I was really proud that we got that uh, recognition. One thing that we're really proud of is our new program that we've got started. It's FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. And this is sponsored by Mr. Russ Shear, and they just really started right around Christmas. And if you look, we had several students go, I think it was March the 8th, yep, March the 8th, and we had six students who placed first place at the FBLA, I think it was in Richmond, and there's a picture of them all there in the school lobby, and they all had to dress like me, they all had to get dressed up, and look like business leaders, and they went, and like I said, you know, there's a big group there, but six of those students placed first. So you can see digital citizenship, explore economics, leadership, FBLA concepts, exploring technology, and learning strategies. So I'm really proud of those students. So we had lots of students who played second place, third place. It was phenomenal. They did a great job. So this has been a really uh, benefit for our students. And again, like Mr. Trude had said earlier, you know, it sort of involves those students who may not be involved in sports or some other activity. It pulls them in and makes them a part of the, the school community and gives them something to focus on. So here's some of the upcoming events. I want to share that with everybody. Um, we've got our spring formal, which I'll put up against any high school prom. <laughs> we invest a lot of time and effort money into that spring formal. That's on April the 26th. It's open to all JCMS students. We want everybody to participate, come out, have a good time. Um, our school awards, we're looking at May 22nd. That's for grades six to eight. And of course, our big culminating uh, activity is our eighth grade promotion, which I want all the board members to come to. That's on May the 23rd. Current <coughs> other activities we've got going on, like sports-wise, or volleyball, which is about to finish up, uh, softball and baseball. So those are some of the things we've got going on. And one thing I wanted to end with, I want to make sure that um, all the members of the board, you're always welcome at Jackson County Middle School. Um, you can feel free to stop by any time. We'll make time to visit, look around the school. If you want to schedule time, feel free to reach out to me or email me anytime and I'll answer any questions to the best of my ability. So that is my portion of the presentation. Does anybody have any questions I can try to answer? Or Well, I guess I do. I used to my put in my mouth most of the time. But <clears throat> there's five schools in Jackson County, correct? Right. Yours is the only school I ever get complaints on. Okay. I had a 20-minute complaint last night. I've been here 44 years. Their complaint is the leadership of the school. So what, what do we intend to do about that? Well, it's I mean, you look good on paper. And on, on this presentation, you look great. But when you have prominent people, I'm not talking about, you've got a certain amount of people complaining about anything, but when you've got upright citizens, elected citizens and teachers that complain because of the morale and everything, what are we gonna do to turn that around? What can the board do? Well, I hope that in comparison to years in the past that we have made some gains. I know there's always going to be some people that I think that will complain. I know you said that you know, there's people that you don't hear from, but then we hear from them, you take them a little bit more seriously. I understand that. Um, as far as the principal of Jackson County Middle School, um, it's incumbent upon me to set the tone, you know, to leave the building. Um, I think we've made lots of strides, and I think this is part of it. I know it's on paper, you know, it's a presentation. Um, I'm open to any suggestions as far as um, things that we can do better. Um, I'm not perfect by any means, and I don't claim to be perfect. Um, I just, uh, you know, I try to do the best I can. I know I'm, I'm a flawed individual, um, but if anybody has any recommendations or anything like that, I'm open to listening and doing the best, you know, to But we as a board and a superintendent, whatever we need to do to help you, if there's anything we do, we need to do it because we need, whatever is going wrong over it needs to be pulled together, we need to get it taken care of, okay? Right. Because you go out of the elementary school ranking high and you come, into, come out of the middle school, going into high school ranking low. So then we use your freshman year to gain scores, okay? Right. So somewhere along the line, we're failing all that. I don't think it's our teachers. I'm gonna be blunt with you, sir. No, I, I think it's our leadership. So I'm not in right. personnel, that's up to Mr. Smith. But you know, take a good strong leader. They gotta have morality teachers, they gotta be all playing together. So like a ball game, it takes a whole team to win it, not just one. Right, and I agree with that 100 percent So good luck. And I'm happy to have conversations with any members of the board or community, you know, that you know, that we can try to make 
welcome to School Bader. You know, I'm open. That's why I have that invitation. I want everybody to know that you are welcome. Well, that's what we want to do as a board. I'm right. sure every board member here does the super. Right. And I'm happy to talk to any one of you. Well, I'll say firsthand, I have a son who was in sixth grade this year. And I went into it with low expectations because. Like he said, you hear a lot of negative about the middle school, unfortunately. And I, I would say that it's been better than I expected. And his grades are, you know, they may not be as good as they were in elementary school. And, but he's still making good grades. Mm -hmm. You know, he enjoys going to school. He has teachers who do push him. Uh, I would say that his involvement has decreased in things that are not sports so you know maybe that's just the difference between middle school and elementary school mm -hmm. but you know if anything I would like to see more involvement in in other programs that you know I, I'd see more in elementary school that I'm not seeing in middle school but you know I don't know that that's your fault it could just be that he's a 12 year old boy who's going through a lot of changes himself like every other student in the middle school. Well, middle school is tough, and again, I'm not making excuses for myself or anybody. You know, middle school is a tough age. You know, there's a lot of things that go on, you know, changes, you know, as we grow up. Um, this is the time when they hit us, and that seems to be the time we go through them the hardest. Um, so, but I'm glad to hear, you know, that you're having a good experience better than you thought you would have, so I appreciate you sharing that. And anything you know you say that you think that we need to do better or whatever you know like i said i'm open to, to that conversation <clears throat> one thing we did that i think had a very positive impact it was actually brought up at the november meeting and we were able to act on it by the december meeting we moved very quickly was to get a director of curriculum instruction who would work primarily at the middle school beyond primary middle school go to pds bring information back work with you and i think that's going very well tonight Right, and it is. Like I said at the beginning, you know, Mr. Sizemore and I work really close together, and I think that's a, a positive move that the district has made to, as a support for the school. So well, that's going well for my locations, but I'll push for that. Right, thank you, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Sizemore. snapshot of some of those things. Um, so this is just a standard list. Um, the Elgin meetings, we attend those together, and that's a cadre for principals. Um, JCMS data meetings, um, and we do those together along with um, Mr. Smith, uh, Ms. Norris, and uh, Ms. Masters. Um, we participate in Portrait of a Learner, and sometimes I will go to those myself and bring information back to uh, Dr. Kirby, and that's through SESC. Um, they also offer a leadership cadre, and that's monthly as well, and um, they cover things that district principals or other administrators would need to know, um, updates. Um, our PLCs are going well. Um, we are doing those regularly. We are going over um, the student data, um, academic behavior. Um, the teachers are able to have a voice, and so um, and it's always important to keep that in mind, and like uh, you mentioned earlier, to help set the time. Um, we've done multiple sets of walkthroughs, and I'll share um, some of those uh, instruments what we use. Um, chronic absenteeism by SESC. Uh, we went from the district first, several of us went to that, and we found it very valuable because it's uh, throughout the state, it's an issue. So we came back and we um, had an attendance planning committee and then we brought in school level teams as well. And after we met, SESC came last week and they trained the, the school on um, what is chronic absenteeism. Um, and different things like that. So now we're looking at um, 
coming up with a district plan as well as a school plan. And the schools have already started on their plans. Um, and came in training, um, and what that is was the Kentucky Mathematics Innovation Tool, and that's part of the AI initiative that he mentioned earlier. So the Elgin Principal Leadership Cadre, what that is, is it's uh, a place where um, uh, leadership is uh, supported by CSC, and it brings important topic, topics specific to principals. It gives the opportunity to collaborate with a group of peers from surrounding districts and share ideas and have access to former principals and the wealth of knowledge they can provide. So, um, you know, they bring in um, research-based information to these principals. They go over um, how to dissect their data, um, using the iReady data to help with predictors towards the end of the year. Um, and they also, you know, they can form um, relationships with other principals to be able to call, bounce ideas off of. Um, you have uh, principals there with many, many years of experience, and then you have new principals, and both have a lot of knowledge that could be useful. Um, as a last leadership cadre, this is kind of just a snapshot kind of what we went over that day. and. Um, it was based off of curriculum-based professional learning, and it centers on supporting educators as they implement the local curriculum using high-quality instructional resources, or HQIRs. We have acronyms for everything, if you didn't know that already. And um, it invites teachers to participate in vibrant, vibrant inquiry-based learning, symmetrical to what is intended for the student experience, and it focuses on how to teach a specific content area or grade level using the instructional resources teachers will use with their students. Now, what's good about this approach is you take the curriculum that your district has adopted and you use the resources and the materials your district has and you deliver that with high quality instruction. And it also, um, you meet in your PLCs and your professional learning committees that we already have. And you do things, for example, you go over a new lesson or a new unit with your peers. You may um, do a lesson rehearsal. You may do a rehearsal of your lesson to your peers. Um, and where that is beneficial, you have the input of your colleagues that are content specific as well. Um, and as a teacher, you may think you have a really good lesson planned and you go to first period and you deliver that lesson and you're like, well, I'm going to have to scrap this part. This part worked really well. And this gives you the time to do that, work those kinks out, and deliver a good lesson right from the beginning. And um, also, student work analysis. Uh, so learning walks and walkthroughs. Um, the one that's used the most is a Google form. And if you want to get that, and we'll just, I'll just give you a snapshot of what that looks like. So it's a Google document that we can use. We can take our iPads and bring them to the classrooms. And it marks the times, the teachers, who's doing the walkthroughs. And then it's based from the Danielson framework and what we're looking for. And some of the things that we're looking for is specific for the middle school and some of the initiatives that we have going on there. Now, the version of this doesn't show it because I would send it to Cameron and he's not an owner. But after we do these walkthroughs, there's a section that we can see the results. Either throw it into a spreadsheet, and we can look at it that way, or it will put, it'll show us graphs, it'll show us how they scored, what, uh, what the lesson was looking like. Was the teacher lecturing the entire le lesson? Were they modeling? Were the students actively engaged? And we can use that moving forward. So um, it gives us a lot, a lot of really good information. And we're using that information to give immediate feedback to the teacher, as well as recommendations to things that they can reflect on from their lessons. And that's immediate. As soon as we walk out of that classroom, we hit submit and it goes. Um, so uh, Dr. Kirby and I have done several together. And that way we can calibrate what we think we're seeing in a classroom so we're on the same page. Um, 
So together we're going to use this information to guide specific professional learning that will benefit Jackson County Middle School all, all together. Um, what kind of professional uh, development we may need for teachers in the summer, uh, looking towards next year, or what we may need for a specific teacher. <coughs> Um, that specific teacher may need help with classroom management, rigor, or questioning techniques. So that's the way this document helps us to uh, gather information to move forward. And I apologize, I'm under the weather. <laughs> <coughs> uh, this is another tool that we have, um, and we have used this. Um, we're going to uh, integrate that in with our Google form so that we have one area that we have all of our documentation and data. But this is a co-teaching, it's a look-for tool, it's a quick tool. Another thing that Jackson County Middle School did this year is they expanded the, um, the sections of co-teaching or collaboration classes that they have. So there's more kids out in the general curriculum with two teachers in the classroom. So this tool helps us to look at what that classroom looks like. How's the seating arrangements? <coughs> Are both teachers? Um, actively engaging with the students. Is one teacher teaching and another teacher <coughs> assisting at that point? What does it look like? So that helps us to see if that's effective. We've, we've done some of these. We give immediate feedback and we also give it to the teachers. We let them know what they're doing well and what they could possibly look for improvement in the next lesson. Um, this is one of the look fors that we that um, is for this document. Um, and you see things like two teachers working together in the same physical space, both teachers assisting all students. But one thing I really like is how it says the teachers use we or our in their language. And that's really important with the culture of the school, the classroom and the school all together is that we talk about our classroom, our students, not my classroom or your classroom. Um, so, you know, that's something that we're really working on, too. We talked about Dr. Curry and I working together. You know, that's a we, so, and that is going very well, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to work with you. Um, this is the KMIT observation tool we just met. Um, that, and that is also from the AI uh, initiative, like we uh, referenced earlier, those eight mathematical teaching practices. Um, this is the tool that when SESC comes in and they observe our math teachers, this is what they're using. They give immediate feedback and then they come back and they give coaching and more support. And we talked about that before as well. But they trained um, the AI team on that and um, we're actually going to get the chance to use that um, next week. So looking ahead, and that's very tiny, um, we're looking at Continue the classroom observations and the feedback to the teachers. Um, we're going to schedule, P we keep scheduled PLCs, and these are always student driven, data driven, um, and um, helps us make decisions moving forward from month to month. Uh, we're going to be meeting with SCSC um, to discuss professional development and what the district and the school needs specifically moving forward and how they can assist us with that. So we will be meeting with them. Um, Jackson County Public Schools is partnering with PRI to implement a volunteer generation partnership grant to develop a community action plan. And I'm sure they'll touch on that, but you know we're also part of that. And uh, PRI has brought some great things in, and they're a great resource for us. Um, the AI team will conduct walkthroughs at the key elementary um, using the KMAT tool. So we were trained on that, and although it just now is being used at the middle school by SESC, they've trained us, and we're going to start um, using that tool um, in the district as well, and we're going to do that at McKean next okay. week. Um, we continue to participate in deeper learning. Um, I had to mention the spring formal because um, everybody's excited about that, and um, one thing I can mention about that as well is it is open to all kids. <coughs> And um, if kids, if they don't have a dress or they don't have a, a button-up shirt, if they need something, uh, the middle school uses their resources 
the teachers use their own resources to make sure every kid can participate in that. Um, they've even stayed after school before, um, and staff or volunteers, and some that is in the audience, may help do their makeup, they may do their hair. So it's a really, it's really a positive thing, and the kids love it, and they look forward to it all year long. Um, we've got the spring already diagnostic window coming open, like you mentioned before. Give us another set of data to be able to compare and project um, how we can look at the KSA test. We have KSA coming. Um, we want to get uh, the kids prepared for that. They know what to what it looks like if they're on a computer-based test. It, they want to should be familiar with that, and it's not the first time they've used it. So we want them to be really proficient in what it takes for them to perform well. We're also using everything that we've, um, uh, all the data that we have through our professional uh, learning communities, uh, just some meetings that Dr. Curry and I have together, um, just as leadership. And we're looking forward to um, scheduling, um, like master schedules, how we're going to schedule the students. Uh, we're looking at enhanced teacher supervision schedules. Uh, this time of year in the spring is a time you sometimes you see an uptick in some behaviors. So we look to um, get ahead of that. Um, we are going to continue with the chronic absenteeism school plan that has a really good umbrella on um, what we're going to do with tier one students, what are we going to do different with tier two students, and tier three and what works for middle school kids in particular. They are a different um, age group and what works for elementary or high just isn't the same. So it would be individual for us and um, we hope to get that together and have that ready um, to start school in the fall. And um, again, um, the collaboration with Dr. Kirby and I is going really well and um, I look forward to uh, uh, working with them next year as well. If you got any questions? How do you choose when you're doing the walkthroughs? Mm -hmm. Is it classroom after classroom? Is it just well? A, a um, we have the numbers master, drawn out. Of the no, we have the master schedule, and um, sometimes we'll start in the morning. And we'll do um, like uh, first the first block. All those teachers. Um, <coughs> and we may, if that the if they're on planning, so we'll go like first through say till lunch and get every teacher that doesn't have planning. Another day we may do um, a different time so that we get those teachers as well. But um, we stagger the time so that every teacher gets observed in a specific amount of time. And also, if um, the version of that had pulled up, it would show you like the pie charts, and every teacher is a different color and it would show you how many observations have been done. And actually, um, we had invited um, Mr. Smith over to do some walkthroughs with us, and he accompanied us in to, um, we didn't get every single classroom, but we got the majority of the classrooms. So we've seen a variety of resource classrooms, co-teaching classrooms, and every subject area. So and we, we had invited him over to participate in that with us. Um, that was last Wednesday, and the thing that impressed me was the use of technology. Every class except two was using technology. One of those was doing a bar graph activity on paper, and the other one was doing a test. So the use of technology was great, and the student behavior in the classroom. We didn't see a single issue. And it was like a, 12, I didn't see a single issue all day. And it was an unannounced. <coughs> so this wasn't a, a scheduled observation for the teacher had a week to prepare. It was, it was an unannounced. She's knock on the door. Yes. Yeah. What day it is. Okay. Yeah. And um, and we used the document that I mentioned. And also um, from the beginning of the year, there's probably been 118 or so observations. We've done over 50 since January the 8th, and that is in addition to the formal evaluations that it's required for Dr. Kirby to do for um, some of the staff in his building as well. And that's in addition to the KMIT observations that SCSC is doing as well. So we have a lot of people that's in the classrooms right now. Do we have any trouble getting substitute teachers? No. 
We did it, I think every district does. It's just tough. And I think we, Christy would agree, Dr. Kirby, it's just tough to find substitute teachers. Now. They have to have a minimum of 64 college credit hours, and I know some legislation that's being looked at right now to lower it. I don't think it's been passed yet, but it's something we're looking at. But not just us, but all districts have trouble getting enough certified subs. It's just the way it is. And some districts require them to have a teaching certificate. Thank you, Ms. Sizemore. Hello again, I'm uh, Amanda Ball. I'm the digital learning coach for the district. I'm also the systems administrator, which means I keep the network up and going and our accounts for our digital programming. And then I'm also the gifted and talented resource teacher. So today I'm going to talk to you about gifted education and I'm going to give you an update like I do annually and I'm going to I've kind of organize this in I'm going to show you what we're doing new this year what we can are continuing to do and then what we have in store for next year hopefully so go ahead and start with what's next so um, I attend um, some technology conferences, one I'll talk about in more depth in a few minutes, but I get to see a lot of different things that other districts are trying. And one thing that kept we kept seeing, and um, Cameron and I both went to sessions on this last year, is uh, Minecraft for Education. And we were unaware that we had access to this, all of our students, K through 12, because of the Microsoft license that we purchased. So I decided last year that I was going to try to, to try to have the kids try to do it. And I, I really researched, I looked online for the lessons that they had. Um, I tried it with my own son at home, he's, he's five, and he was able to do it. So I thought, surely I can, I can teach students how to do this as well. So I kind of just went all in with it and um, I'm happy to say that our students in Jackson County absolutely love whenever we're doing Minecraft lessons. They have um, been able to use their creativity to build all kinds of items. I give them a building challenge whenever I'm working with them. I'll say something along the lines of um, build me a amusement park ride. And so they get in there and they just go to town and you would not believe some of the products that they come up with. It's really amazing. So that's one of the new things that we're doing this year. We, I started it a little bit towards the end of last year, and this year we've really been, I spent um, a couple months, and then we hit it there, here or there, um, doing some Minecraft lessons. The next thing is, um, towards the end of the year, we were able to purchase some STEM sets. Those included everything from Lego kits to um, just some volcano kits, some building marble run kits. Um, if you have noticed, whenever you were in the technology room, the bookshelves towards the back is where we contain all of our STEM stuff. So we got all kinds of different things now that I am utilizing and teachers are able to check out from the technology department also in use for STEM activities. And then the last one that you see up here is defined learning. That's um, through the Deeper Learning Initiative. All of, our, all of my students, because I participate in the training, get access to Defined Learning, and it is a project-based learning website. They have, have done anything from um, a project on building a tiny home where they incorporate math skills and measuring, you know, measuring skills with that, they, uh, creativity, and then some science as well in uh, building their tiny home. They have done uh, food trucks and how would they manage their food truck and, and what would they what would their space look like. And with that program, I'm also able to incorporate some of these other new things. So with their tiny home, I had them then take their idea and their plan and create that tiny home in Minecraft. So I've been trying to 
use all of these new things together and it's been working really well. Here are some pictures of the students doing Minecraft. And you can see they are fully engrossed whenever they play. They get to get in the worlds together. Sometimes that's a good thing and they help each other out and sometimes it's not good and they destroy the, each other's things so they get a little aggravated at each other sometimes. But we have to talk about why um, somebody, someone might get upset for you to do that and that brings in a lot of like emotional and social things as well. So my middle schooler, you can see up here there's pictures of middle schoolers using it too and they also enjoy it. So all of my students play and they do enjoy it. The next thing here, and there's some sound on that one. While he's working on that, I'll just explain. Um, I, I know I showed you <coughs> last year our snap circuits, another thing that they really enjoy. We got all new kits this year, so each student that I work with, last year we had to do a lot of sharing, so they worked in partner groups, but this year they're able to have their own kit, and so they really like being able to have that um, independence and, and be able to build their own things. They, they use little blocks, almost kind of like Legos, only they have, there it goes, go ahead and play it. So they they love the fan. They get a good giggle out of that when it goes flying in the air. But um, they really have learned a lot about electricity through those snack circuits, and they're simple to use. But they um, teach them a lot about how. Electri electricity travels through a circuit. Here's some more pictures of students doing that. I use that with my elementary students and I work with students at all three elementary schools and I have the middle school students, they come over to me so I'm able to uh, work with them over here. <laughs> that you see down in the corner, they're able to code that and make it change colors or make it say things or even make emojis out of that. So they really have um, went all in with that. This is middle school students. They enjoy having races with them. They play tag with them. Um, they come up with their own games. It's really fun to watch them play around with those. <coughs> So here you see them uh, using the Lego kits. The Lego kits also require coding. They build the robot, so they built that robot from scratch. And then they had to code it to follow that black line. So the robot you see kind of moving side to side, it's looking for that the color black, and then it follows that line. It worked well until it didn't. <laughs> um, they, when they do an activity like this and it doesn't work, they're really good about, well, I want to see what, what happened, what went wrong, and they try to fix that. Today, we, uh, well, we have been doing some field trips to go see some plays at the EKU Center for the Arts this year. We actually went to one today, so we are fresh off of a field trip bus today. Um, I took middle schoolers today to see Upcycled Cinderella. It was a play about um, the story Cinderella, only she had, uh, they used props that were recycled materials. So it was a neat take on Cinderella. The students really enjoyed it. 
We were able to go eat at Olive Garden afterwards. They thought that was a very good treat. Uh, we also, back in December, went to see holidays around the world. With, I took my third graders on that trip. So, what's next? I have some exciting news. I, one of those conferences I was talking to you about is the KISTI conference. It's Kentucky Society for Technology and Education. Uh, Rhonda Thompson, our district technology coordinator, is a board member of, of the KISTI conference, and she encouraged several people in our district. You know, she opened it up, why don't you apply for this grant? We have a $10,000 grant you can apply for. And so I took her up on that offer. I was like, I'm going to get some stuff. And Let's go back a slide, please. Just um, so I applied <coughs> for the KISTI Average Grant, and I was able to get it. And of the $10,000, I got $9,999.70, and they presented me with a big check, my first ever big check. So I was really excited about that. What am I going to do with that money? So what am I going to do with that money? Well, um, our ATC recently got uh, 75 VR headsets, and that's what you see down in the corner. Cameron and I got the um, honor of going up there and, and getting those set up for them, and I saw how amazing they were. So I thought I need to get some of those. And so we're getting the latest version. I'm able to buy 10 of those. And then I'm really excited about the kind of stuff that the kids are going to get to do. So I've got two of the applications that I'm also purchasing with this money, and I want to just show those to you. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. On the Apollo mission, the flight to land, the first men on the moon. So that's the Apollo Quest application. When the students put on those goggles, it's going to be a fully immersive experience. It's going to feel to them like they are the astronaut. They are going to the moon. Is it likely that our, some of our Jackson County students could go to the moon? Absolutely. But is it likely that all of the students I work with will go to the moon? Well, probably not. So this gives them that chance without getting their feet off the ground. The next one is a Lego Brick Tales application. They are going to be able to build virtually these little, um, like you saw the boat, and then they are able to take that virtually into a world that is um, a Lego world, and they're able to manipulate it and move it around. And VR, virtual reality, augmented reality, is the next big thing. We're seeing that come down the pipe on um, 
other than artificial intelligence, it is the most talked about thing that we're seeing in our technology conferences. So very excited to get to dip our toe in that and get started with using that next year. That's all I have. presentation so just bear with me this will just take a couple minutes uh, elementary restrooms we've been doing that project this year we've got all essentially all the materials in we'll be working on those over spring break which is in early April and we'll finish those in uh, as soon as schools out this summer so we've got essentially all the materials in we've got part is already making plans for that and we're on course to have all of our elementary restrooms renovated uh, by, the, by the beginning of school year next year the second thing, our K-12 science curriculum, our curriculum committee's been working diligently, and we should have that ready for the April meeting. Is that the first statement, Ms. Norris? Yes. So we'll have the materials and everything for you guys to review, and we anticipate, fully anticipate having our K-12 science curriculum program here at the April meeting. This completes our core content. We did reading, I think, two years ago, math, social studies last year, and this will complete our core content. Yes, ma'am. And we'll have a stakeholder meeting for community and teachers um, on April the 9th here at the Board of Education. Okay, thank you, Liz. The next thing would be our Jackson County High School Library Lights. This was an update we sent out, so Cameron, if you just shoot those up, and I'll go through these very quickly. But we did new lighting at the Jackson County High School Library, and we replaced the fluorescent lights with uh, smaller LED lights. According to Ms. Master, it's the perfect lighting, so I'm sure it is. But we're very pleased with that project. It turned out really well. We're also in the process. We did new flooring in Tyner, and we'll be doing new flooring in San Gap for the library, the VTEC, and we'll also be doing new flooring in McKee. I've already talked to Ms. Myers about that as well. So, a lot of smaller projects in addition to the large roofing projects and things that we've done as well. The next one would be uh, volleyball. We purchased a uh, new volleyball netting, padding. What's the stands called, West that you stand on? Judge's stand. Judge's stand, we purchased all that new. I actually went to the game for the first game with it and they were very excited. So we've got that uh, in the middle school. It's the new colors for the school. So the kids were very excited and uh, it looked really good. The next one will be uh, Read Across America. <coughs> went over to Tyler Elementary, First Lady, <coughs> Kentucky First Lady, Brittany Bashir read a couple of books, one of the books she had written. I think the name of it, what was the name of it, Lori? Winnie? Uh, it was a tour of the state capitol. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Winnie yes. visits the state capitol. Winnie visits the state capitol. All the kids, just like her behavior at the middle school, the kids were great. We pulled the second graders into a room, and it was a very nice event. So I commended Hunter, Mackenzie, and everybody participated in doing that. So uh, we'll move on to the next one. Anything you'd like to add, Lori? Or? Uh, no, and we'll elaborate a little okay. bit more when it's our turn to okay. present. Sounds good. The next one is uh, school safety <coughs> assessment. Priority among priorities for Jackson County Public Schools is to always have a safe learning and work environment for our students and staff. And we emphasize that. We're very fortunate to have an SRO at each school in collaboration with the Jackson County Sheriff's Department. So I'll just read this. see that so I'll read it from there. The state school safety marshal compliance officer recently conducted an unannounced safety risk assessment visit for all five schools. The unannounced safety assessments were done on the following dates. San Gap Elementary and McKee Elementary were conducted on February the 1st. Hyder Elementary and Jackson County Middle School were conducted on February the 28th. And the Jackson County High School assessment was conducted on March 13th. The safety school safety risk assessment is a very thorough report with an assessment summary on the last page. All five schools received the following on their assessment summary. No issues were discovered during the assessment of the schools in compliance. So we actually had 100% compliance. So I think any district would be very, very pleased to have that. Uh, the next one will be the FBLA. And this is something Dr. Kirby looked at earlier. But for the first time ever, the Jackson County Middle School has an FBLA. Future Business Leaders of America, they attended the conference. And we sent an update out on that as well. So we're very proud of all their accomplishments. We had several when things in first place, place and several others place in different areas. <clears throat> and 
last thing I have would be the greenhouse project. And we completely, uh, the skeleton of the greenhouse is all that we didn't change, but we've done a major <coughs> renovation of the greenhouse, as you can see there. So we're very pleased that the greenhouse mega store bill knows is near completion of the Jackson County High School greenhouse renovation, which is now complete. They have completed a job of high quality materials and workmanship. A special thanks to Kendra Bingham for the pictures and the time she spends every day making the greenhouse a successful experience for our students. So Ms. Meister's provided the information and pictures, but uh, we've got the greenhouse in tip top shape now. And Kendra uses it a tremendous amount. It's a big, big asset for our anchor. And that's all I have on that. Thank you, Cameron. We'll go down to the next one. 2E, Jackson County High School, AJROTC presentation. Anthony Saylor, we also have Mr. Scott Hayes with us tonight as well. And some of our ROTC students. All right, good afternoon, board members, Mr. Smith, community, some of my peers out here. Um, brought a few cadets up. Uh, Mr. Smith called me a few weeks ago, wanted me to come up and do an overview over the uh, junior ROTC program. So, uh, the National Defense Act of 1916 is what established six units, uh, junior RTC units in uh, private and public institutes. The 1964 program um, changed from active duty to shared support and service in schools. So what that meant, active duty was the one that ran the programs when the first six were established. After that, they started using reserve component and retirees. Uh, biggest takeaway from this slide is the mission of the junior RTC is to make young people better citizens. It is a pillar to the program. Any questions? This is a curriculum overview of the program, which fully and partially addresses the number of national academic standards to include common core standards, state standards, Includes coursework, leadership, civics, geographic, uh, global awareness, health and wellness, language arts, life skills, and U.S. history. Their curriculum is based on the principles of performance-based learner-centered education and promotes development of core abilities. Capacity for lifelong learning, communication, responsibility for actions and choices, good citizenship, respectful treatment to others, and critical thinking techniques. And that's really what we try to instill in the cadets in this program is the discipline, uh, self-service, self-learning. It's more than just community service. So service learning is about them taking away from something and learning from it than just volunteer time for community service. <clears throat> Any questions on this slide? Okay. Core abilities, uh, apply critical thinking techniques, Build your capacity for lifelong learning. Communicate using verbal, nonverbal, visual, and written techniques. Do your share of good citizens to your school, community, country, and the world. And take responsibility for your actions and choices. Treat self and others with respect. Uh, we, we deal with this every day. I think uh, the military has been doing this for a long time. Uh, treat people with respect, uh, taking pride in what they do, their work ethic, and being disciplined. Any questions? Program outcomes. Program outcomes describe what junior RTC cadets will know and be able to do upon successful completion of the program. As cadets complete the leadership educational training that's a let, and each one of those books that's on the, on the table in front of you, it's a let one for freshman, let two for sophomore, and on up to senior levels and let five. <clears throat> the junior RTC program outcomes are act with integrity, personal accountability as to lead others to success in a diverse and global workforce. Engage in civic and social concerns in the community, government and society. Graduate prepared to succeed in post-secondary options and career pathways. Make decisions that promote positive social, emotional, and physical health. Value a role of the military and other service organizations. Any questions? Course competencies. Competencies describe discipline, specific, measurable, and uh, observable skills, knowledge, and attitudes. They are targeted in each lesson of, lesson of the curriculum. Performance standards, criteria, and conditions provide the specifications for assessing mastery of the competency. 
Cadets show how they learn competencies by applying them in a completion of assessment tax that require them to do one or more of the following, make a decision, perform a skill, perform a service, solve a problem, create a product. Uh, and I think this kind of plays a part as far as in the educational explicit instructions, um, that, that's a big buzzword that I've, I've heard a lot about. But the military has done it for years. You know, we train people, we train soldiers, we train cadets. We use visual techniques. To, uh, we use videos. We use uh, observations on each other. Uh, they read. Uh, I always tell the students in my class, don't wait for the movie, read the book. All the knowledge is in that book. Um, so if they want to get smart, they just need to go to the books. So. With that being said, um, if you don't care, turn to the left five book, page six, uh, demonstrators. So page six, this is the way we all have to do drill. Dress right, dress. Ready, run, parade, rest. I am Cadet Command Sergeant Major Rogers of the Jackson County High School, AJRTC. The demonstrator to my left is Cadet Captain Hayes. The demonstrator to my right is Cadet Captain Bellamy. Attention, or arm. Right shoulder, arm. Or arm. Left shoulder, arms. Port, arms. Present, arms. Port, arms. Inspection, arms. Port up. Swing up. Present up. Order up. Unswing up. Order up. Parade rest. This concludes our demonstration. Attention. Right face. Forward march. They do it as a team, work together, observe each other, correct, make corrections on the spot, and then at the end we evaluate. We've got a checklist. So each one of those left books have a, has a cadet notebook that follows along with the textbook that they go to, and there, those sheets are in there that we evaluate, and that's how we grade. Any questions? All right, these are national events. Um, I don't know if... <coughs> Everybody's aware of the national events that, that GRTC conducts and that we can be a part of. So the Cyber Patriot is held in March 15th through the 19th in Maryland. A lot teaches more about cyber security, A plus network, that kind of stuff. Just like the IT, the STEM people are, are, are teaching. If I could get you know those type of kids involved, I just don't know if they know the program has that opportunity for them. So we do have that opportunity. So I think if everybody understands what the program's about, we can recruit more people to be in the program. Air Rifle Championship, I think uh, Colonel Whitaker and Sergeant First Class Smith did an excellent job. 
He really loved the, the marksmanship part of the junior ROTC program, and they have competed in Camp Perry. Scott, when was the last time they competed in Camp Perry? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. So it's a national event. You have to do so many postals and score for them top tier to get invited to Camp Perry. So we're still going to try to continue the, that program, Air Rifle. Most of these cadets I have with me tonight have participated in the Air Rifle um, postals. We've been to Great Tennessee this year, North Carolina, and had some good times and made a lot of memories. Drone Championship, we do have a few drones. Uh, I think most of them are kind of like broken, damaged. Uh, they must have had a, a cyber team with before I got there. But I can get more equipment to use, but there, there is a competition in Mississippi for drones. And just another thing that when we talk about STEM that would benefit students. So once again, if I can get this out to the, the students in eighth, seventh and eighth graders, and as they come into high school, maybe we can develop a drone team. There's robotics. Um, Last week we went to Fort Knox, competed air rifle, they had raiders, they had robotics. So this is another uh, avenue that kids could take if they're interested in that type of stuff with robotics and that competitions in Dallas, Texas. Um, one I think that this is kind of new, but it's not new to, to most schools. I think elementary and middle schools all over have done archery. National event is in Louisville, same for the Junior RTC. It'll be in Louisville, Kentucky for this region. But I know in the past they've not done any archery here in this program. So uh, one thing we might look at next year is maybe trying to see if there's anybody interested in archery. <coughs> National Drill Championships, that's held at uh, Daytona Beach. And we do drill. Uh, competitions at, at local Raider events, but when you go to these national events like this, you <coughs> have a good amount of people and be pretty, you know, high speed. So I don't think uh, most of the cadets in this uh, school has been to the drill championship, but that's another thing that if we have assets and the time, another thing we could invest in and take cadets to. National Fitness Challenge is also in Daytona Beach. May 4th. We are taking our kids to this uh, event this year. We've been training every day, four or five days a week, and I'm looking forward to it. There's some tough competition. There's 70 teams uh, across the nation that, that attend this event, but uh, I know Jackson County's never attended the national event, the National Fitness Challenge, so I'm really looking forward to it and just uh, wish the best for our team and hopefully we can at least get in the top, you know, 15 out of 70 is what I'm hoping for. Uh, if not, even winning, you know, but there's a lot of these national events, these schools do it every year. They know how to manage people and a lot of these national events are, there's five events in this competition, um, chin-ups and most of the, like chin-ups, 30, I think the average was 30 for the winning team. So trying to get a kid nowadays to do 30 chin-ups is tough. I mean, most adults can't do 30 chin-ups or, you know, <coughs> train for it. So another thing that I think we can work for that really uh, helps their mental health and their fitness. And they've been working hard for us. So I'm, I'm very proud of our cadets for this. And this is the uh, Leadership Academic Bowl. I don't know, did any of you all know we had an academic bowl opportunity? So this year we competed level one and we passed uh, level one, we went to level two and uh, we got cut out at level two. But the level three is in Washington, D.C., the, the championship, 40 teams get to go there. But we have smart kids, we got smart kids in this school system based off of all the other programs that I've just heard. Um, if I could work with, you know, our academic teams and grow and get them in our program, academics teams here compete at schools, national event or the state events, probably Louisville, that's as far as they're going to go. This is an opportunity to go see Smithsonian Museums, paid for, 
And it's a, it's an academic, it's the same thing they're doing anyway. I just need these kids to realize we do have an academic team. So uh, this is the Raider Challenge National Competition that Taylor Fort Knox. It's in October. It's kind of tough um, to get prepared for that event. School gets back in in August, then boom, you got about a month and a half, and then you're going to a competition. So um, it's another opportunity, and hopefully we get there and we get to take some of our kids to this Raider Challenge. Uh, and we're working right now currently on trying to get us um, a confidence course, obstacle course built to help hone our skill sets. Um, JC, LC, and STEM camps, another uh, opportunity. We are going to Whitesburg, Tennessee this year, June 2nd through the 5th on JC, LC. It's our leadership camp. I'll be taking 15 cadets. Good opportunity, I'm looking forward to it. It's on Cherokee Lake. Um, they'll do orienteering, first aid, a lot of good life life skills they'll learn at, at JCLC. And this is another event, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's, a, it's an international humanitarian law competition. It also has an opportunity if you uh, end up getting invited and winning, you go to, to Washington, D.C. So there's a lot of things under our umbrella. I just don't think, you know, the kids that's been recruited or advertised uh, to our young middle schoolers as they come into high school, what was the opportunities we have uh, in the program. This is just a picture of our battalion formation that we took. Um, we're 41 strong right now in the program. And as a battalion organization, we have staffs, S1, S2, S3, S1 is, is personnel, S2 is intel, three is operations, uh, four is logistics, and five is special projects. But by the time we fill those staff positions with battalion commander and sergeant major, I don't really have any privates per se to do the things that need to be done. So we're struggling a little bit there. So we definitely need to get recruiting uh, and make that one of our 50 meter targets. This is in North Carolina. We took some trophies home from that. Was that the Bulldog shoot? Uh, bulldog shoot. We all had a good time. Kids got to stay down, down in the pool for uh, a couple evenings, so they enjoyed it. We made a lot of memories. This competition, I think, was at uh, Mount Sterling. What did we win? Academics, first place. <coughs> Coming on third. Yeah. Fourth overall. Yeah, fourth overall. So we're competing with these bigger schools. I mean, we've done really well. Um, and I'm very proud of these students. You know, they came in the school year, no instructors. Scott got there, trying to hold it together. He's still trying to hold it together. He's trying to get me established. Uh, been a great asset to the program. This was a Brown County a Raider competition, and uh, they really enjoyed that competition. This was a flag at one of the elementary schools. We went down to teach the elementary students. The picture on the right is also another Raider challenge, going through the obstacle course. And the picture on the left was at Great Tennessee. This is our ROTC uh, building. Uh, several of these schools we've competed with, they've got like, kind of like their own buildings to do drill, uh, the shooting for the marksmanship program, and that's where they held it at in Great Tennessee, Daniel Boone High School. Picture on the right is on the Clinch Mountain. I don't know if anybody's been on the Clinch Mountain here, but that's the Veterans Overlook on the Clinch Mountain. We stop there and let take some pictures. Any questions? You just talk for this in high school. Excuse me, sir. You just talk for this program in high school. That's correct. All the other in high schools. Are you the way we can get down to the middle school? No, but I've been talking to, to Mr. Smith and, and uh, Principal Kirby about trying to bust eighth graders up next year for one period. Like they, they bust band members now. So if there's any kids interested, Eighth graders next year try to get them bust up for one period. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. I conveyed to Mr. Saber and Dr. Kirby is very open to that and we plan on making it happen. Okay. Looking forward to it. How can we help you as a board to, in any way that you need? Well, I think we've talked about it. Uh, he's going to push some funding. 
This year we spent thirty-five thousand, and, and that's all in your your package. Yeah. Everything that we left you. The, the presentation that he just made is also in there. If you have any questions on it. Yeah. So it was, what people don't realize with this program is, you know, athletics. Your baseballs for a season, footballs for a season. You know, we're doing color guards for volleyball, basketball, football. You know, so our students have to be there. And we have to train and try to get more people because you burn people out if the same three or four cadets do it every, you know, every ball game. So, and with that, you know, out of 41 cadets right now, we've got about probably 15, 16 that stay after and do everything we ask them. You know, the other, the other 20 folks, students, cadets, they don't, could be their home life, could be, don't have transportation. So there's a lot of things we have to work through and a lot of variables. But, you know, we go to competitions year round. Raiders, you've seen October's a big one at Fort Knox, the national. We go to these marksmanship uh, post postals all year long. Uh, you know, we do parking at Battle of Richmond, trying to raise some extra money, Spoon Bread Festival. Any events that the school has, graduation, I think Mr. Harris is gonna use us there but it's just a lot of time and effort and money really to keep these kids going. Some of our equipment's getting older. Uh, as everybody knows, con contiguous resolution, you know, has not been passed, they keep patching it, and brigade won't let loose a fund because they don't know what money they got, you know. So I've got them spend 3,000 here recently. They bought us some new color guard staffs, covers, um, uniform items, but if we grow the program in the future, and I think we will grow, uh, grow the program, is uniforms are expensive. And right now, I don't have a way to get uniforms from Fort Knox, from the brigade. So if we enlist more people into the program, I'm probably going to need uniforms, and that's going to cost you know, a significant amount of money. But especially if you alter them, you get them clean, like this year, uh, we didn't have a way to get them clean. We didn't have the funding. <coughs> on our end, trying to figure it out with Fort Knox, Cadet Command, and, and maybe the school board had it, but by the time we found it out, with everything else that we were doing, me trying to figure out the job, um, and I know that's impacted some students. You know, there were students that didn't come to the military ball on Saturday night because the uniforms don't fit. They're dirty, you know, and I, I got it. You know, it's that's on us, a shame on the, on the program, but you gotta have funding for that kind of stuff. And, you know, seamstress work is not cheap. And trying to find somebody to do it is even harder problem. So really that's what, what I need from the school board is just support and funding, you know, in, in the future. This year, you know, we're we're still working. We're gonna try to build some stuff with obstacle course. I've worked a deal with uh, Blue Grace Army Depot to give me some lumber and cross ties and that kind of stuff. So I'm trying every avenue I know to try to get some stuff for the program. And I'll Why continue working on the budget. What's that? Why don't you work out a budget, present it back to the board, and see what we can do with it? Okay. I ain't gonna say we'll fund it. All, yeah. But yeah. Let's see what we can do with it. Yeah, we got a budget, and it's it's in your packet as well, along no, with we're bringing in our students evening. to competition in dirty uniforms, or some that don't fit. Okay. No, we don't want to do that. Not for that. We'll get it to you. A lot of funding used to come from the gay, but the government's not released it as it did in the past. Correct. Correct. And I already talked to Mr. Saylor about funding. We've got some playback grant money, we've got general fund money. So we've had public good discussions about that with your very good. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. willing to help, you know, we're just trying to, you know, round up the grow back on it and we'll get, you know, some money. But you know, in the future it just takes a lot to run a program like this. You know. You can fundraise all you can fundraise, you know, and that when you're fundraising against all the other athletic departments in the school, it's just tough. When it's time for next year's freshmen to start picking out their extracurriculars and stuff. Are you going to send some cadets to the middle school to recruit eighth graders? Oh yes, I'm probably, the rest That's of this. That's always been. Right, the rest of this year, I'll probably try to get the middle school at least two to three times this year. The watch remain to try to get recruits. Yeah. Yes, too. Brings a free little tear to my eye when I see the teachers. Any other questions?
combination, Mr. Saber and Mr. Page, you guys are great. Enjoy the military, Bob Saber, he's a great tour. Yeah, thank you for coming. Last presentation is item 2L, Partners of the Rural Impact Program, Full Service Community Service Promise Zone Scale Up Grant presentation. We have Ms. Lori Looney, Ms. Phyllis Brown. Last year we met with Lori and Phyllis, myself and Ms. Norris. We talked about priorities for the program and they've been great to work with and uh, we look forward to continuing this for many years to come and all those priorities have been made at the very highest level. The big key with any program, no matter what it is, is hiring good people and uh, your school coordinators, you have five of the best there. I've been very impressed with all five. So thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you for the invitation, Mr. Smith, Ms. Norris. We're happy to be here. I've actually been in Jackson County today visiting some schools, so it's been a long day. But uh, just to get started, uh, Partners for Rural Impact, uh, this new full service state scale grant encompasses 12 school districts and we have 59 school coordinators. So it's a large grant, one of the largest that PRI operates. We do have five of the best school coordinators in your district, so, or I'm partial, I guess. I am their program manager in Jackson Clay and Owsley County. Uh, Here's where we do our work. Uh, this encompasses what, where, what areas we're in in this part of Kentucky. And this next one shows the four pillars that we operate under. The first one is expanding learning time, and that would be our after school weekend and summer programs. Uh, integrated student services, those are support programs for out of school learning and the barriers that students and families face in this area mental, physical, and uh, health services for our students and families. Another uh, pillar is active family and community engagement. We want the schools and all the areas that we serve, the districts that we serve to be the hub, the schools to be the hub of the community and be very welcoming to stakeholders, families, community members. Uh, that's very important to us with this grant and in the collaborative leadership practice where everyone comes together to build a culture of learning. So, I'm going to turn it over to the real highlights of tonight with our presentation. And we'll start with Charity Rose. She's the coordinator at Jackson County High School. Okay, we're just going to talk about some of the things that's been going on at each school. So, at the high school, um, on March 8th, we brought in, uh, this was a collaborative um, event between me and Alicia at the middle school. It was the mega body. I don't know if I didn't get a picture, but you start at the head. It was almost the length of the entire gym. And students was able to go through and you had QR codes that you could scan. And it started at the head and ended at the end of the body with all these different facts. And also we brought in the mega colon. And then we also had roughly five to six different um, health organizations. The hospital come in and taught how to do CPR. We had mental health um, people there. We had Lighthouse Clinic just passing out some things. So we wasn't due to the time the middle school come up and brought all eighth grade students. And then the high school, it was 370 of our students got to walk through that day. And then this is something that I'm really excited about. I've started, um, it's going to be six sessions, hopefully, if it's good this year, I would love to continue it every other year, but I'm focusing on adulting 101 sessions, and last week we started our first one, and we taught, we, I had 12 students stay, which at the high school level, that's great, <laughs> so, um, and they stayed, and they learned just basic finances, so we talked about debit cards, credit cards, how to write a check, how to fill out an envelope. Um, and then the students, I was shocked, you know, they, they need some work, that's what we're doing. And then this week we've got basic homemaking, which is like laundry care. Um, we're gonna do a basic cooking, basic car mechanics, first aid and resume interview workshop. So this will be um, March through in April. Any questions for me? All 
Hello, I'm Alicia, the PRI school coordinator at the middle school. Uh, like Dr. Kirby said, you know, we've expanded our Ask an Expert tutoring after school program and included Makerspace. Um, we recently added 10 walk kits. Um, students can listen to podcasts while taking a walk outside. Um, so not only are they learning, but they're also getting physical activity. Um, they love these Spiros. Don't ask me how to use them because I don't know how, but the kids love them. Um, we've got snack circuits, and today was our Tyner Transportation Day, and we have roughly three to four students at least every Tuesday and Thursday utilizing transportation to both ends of the county. We had 15 kids stay after school today. So prior to this, um, there would be two or three. So they, and we're encouraging, if we're looking at grades, and if their grades are behind, we're like, you need to at least spend 20 minutes during after school tutoring, and then you can come to um, enrichment in that makerspace. Um, February 24th, we loaded up on a Saturday. It was cold enough to snow. Um, we took 24 kids to the University of Kentucky's Engineering Day. They had thousands of attendees that day, um, but we treaded through the crowds and got to ex um, experience a lot of different things. And I think it was just nice for our kids to actually see what the College of Engineering looks like on the campus at UK. So that's um, just two big things that I've got going on at the middle school and happy to be there. I'll turn it over to Rebecca Jane. Hello, I'm Rebecca Jane. I'm the PRR coordinator at Sand Gap Elementary. There are a few things that we've done. Um, I try to target gr different grades for different activities, so I'll just show you a few. I started an after school math club, we call it the Crazy Eights Math Club. This is third through fifth, and I have anywhere from 15 to 20 students that will typically stay after school. Um, the company supplies all of the um, information we need and the lessons, and we go through and we make um, different activities, and we, we make math fun, we do interactive things. And have kids come up and say, can we have math club every single day? <laughs> so they really do enjoy it. Um, I did this workshop with fifth grade students during library. Um, that way all students were able to participate, even if there was not transportation for after school. This was in partnership with the Greer College um, um, Pottery Department. And the students were um, led through a virtual with the professor and they built their own clay bowls um, throughout the week, then they painted those. And then there was a literacy component, so each student came up with their own story about themselves and their life, and they used the clay to make their own characters to add to the clay bowls. And then we had those fired at the college, and then our upcoming literacy night in April, we're gonna have all these on display, and all the students made their own label with their story, so we'll get to showcase those and have family engagement. Hi everyone, I'm Kenzie, and I am the school coordinator at Tyler. Alright, so this is some of the stuff that I have been doing in March. The first thing that I have on my slide is from our career week. I had some community members stop by and some of them, they kind of had like a try on aspect of their career, which was really cool. And I also had the first lady, um, she zoomed with our kids and she read a book and they loved it. And this is something new that we're trying. Um, this is from a nonprofit. It's called the Marco Shimwell Foundation. And what they specialize in is something called a, uh, a birthday box. And they, um, they send these for free. So we got 30 of them at Tyner. And we're just gonna try it out this semester and see how it goes. So it comes with some free cake, some frosting, and toy. So that's all I have. Does, does anybody <coughs> have any questions? All right, thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Lexi.
Lexi. <clears throat> All right, um, Lexi Markham. <clears throat> I'm the school coordinator at McKay Elementary. Um, so one of the things that I was able to do through PRI was I had the author, Lynn Florence. She's from um, Danville. She has several books about Woody the Kentucky Wiener Dog. And part of her activity is she actually brings the dogs from the books with her. At the end of the reading of the books, all the students are able to do a meet and greet with the dog, take pictures, and the kids really enjoy that. Um, and then another thing that we focused on is family engagement, um, like Mr. Truitt had talked about in his PowerPoint. This was one of the events that we done in February for Muffins with Mom. It was a very successful turnout. Um, a big thing with PRI is family engagement. And so when Mr. Truitt wanted to focus on an event every month, I was glad to hear that. We feel that if we can get families into the school, make them view it as a hub of service, feel comfortable talking to us and, us and asking for things, um, that that can make their educational journey a little bit better. And then hopefully in the upcoming weeks from March, our activity is going to be a family paint night. Um, so families can come and paint with their student, and it's open to all students coming here. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Lindy. I am the project director for the Full Service Community Schools State Scale Grant that serves Jackson County Schools. Um, like Phyllis mentioned a little earlier, this is one of the largest grants that has ever been awarded to Partners for Rural Impact in its history. Um, it is the largest full service community schools grant in the state of Kentucky and the largest in the United States of America. Uh, there were only three awarded. Two came to Kentucky and one went to Puerto Rico. And we got the largest one. The grant footprint serves seven counties, 12 school districts, and we employ 65 people. The lifespan of the grant is approximately five years. There's the opportunity to extend if we meet certain parameters, but the scope is five years. And like Phyllis mentioned, we can offer services to your school under what they call the full service community schools pillars. So we can provide um, extending and enriching educational opportunities for students like you saw mentioned um, a few moments ago. We can offer activities that speak to student health, so mental health, physical health, anti-drug initiatives, those kinds of things. Um, we can offer services that improve family engagement, creating the school as the hub of the community as you've seen alluded to in the presentation. And then finally, we can offer services that build collaborative leadership in the context of the school. Um, when I was invited to come and speak to the board this evening, I was thrilled to accept the invitation because speaking of collaborative leadership, you have no finer level of collaborative leadership in our entire grant footprint than right here in Jackson County. Um, Jackson County Schools d is distinguished among the 12 districts we serve in that this is the only school district that had the superintendent, the grant point of contact, so Mr. Smith and Ms. Norris, and every single principal in the district participating in all interviews of school coordinators. No other district had that level of involvement with our grant, and it shows up in the fine people we were able to employ to come to work in your school district. So these are PRI employees that are placed in your schools through an agreement with the school district, and they are year-round employees, which means we can offer these wonderful services in the context of the school day, before school, after school, but also throughout the summer, which is such an important time to prevent um, learning slide um, and the kinds of things that contribute to chronic absenteeism that you've heard referenced before. So I would just want to say on behalf of the grant, thank you so much to uh, Mr. Smith, to Ms. Norris, and to all the principals who have been so actively involved in this grant. Um, like I said, we made fantastic hires and it was because of their active involvement in the process. Um, just to kind of hit the highlight points here, we are only in, uh, we just concluded year one of the grant. 
So in a small footprint of time, we have been able to make over a $300,000 investment in this community. And we're so thrilled that we're able to do it. Um, we have made that investment, just let me tick off the highlights here, with five full-time staff, so their salary is wrapped up into the contribution to your community. Um, we did our first round of what we call supplemental awards. So those are financial awards to the district that allow these services to occur. So things like arts programming, STEM programming, anti-drug programming, um, we fund through the supplemental award. And we had um, 11 external contracts with outside agencies that we brought in um, to provide services, um, like those mentioned in the presentation. Um, spring 2024, um, we have the hope of bringing uh, more services like that, and your supplemental award for spring constitutes quite a bit of before, during, and after school tutoring, and bus transportation for field trips. Um, we have on the books trying to execute on 18 external contracts with outside agencies to come in and provide services in the spring and then we will have day camps in every single school we serve throughout the summer months and we're in the process of trying to coordinate that now. Um, so like I said, it's our pleasure to be here. Just one final note, you mentioned school culture. You mentioned um, all Kentucky schools battling chronic absenteeism. This is a huge emphasis of our grant and all of our school coordinators and our leadership team will be trained on strategies to combat chronic absenteeism. As part of their day-to-day -day responsibility in the school, each of these school coordinators cultivates a caseload of students who are emerging uh, with patterns of chronic absenteeism who might benefit from a caring adult in their lives to encourage them to persist in education. And so we have started that informally with a small cohort of students, and then that will expand over time as more students need support in the context of school. Um, I hope th this is the first time we're speaking to you, but I hope it certainly uh, will not be the last. And I look forward to speaking to you over the five year span of the grant to update you uh, more on the things that we hope to do for Jackson County Schools. Um, just to be very brief, um, I am a daughter of Appalachia, come from a very, very disadvantaged background. And what I wouldn't have given during my public education to have had grant services like this. So I'm grateful to be able to do this, um, be a part of this work for kids I know who will benefit from the very hard work of these ladies here. So thank you and thanks to our school coordinators. Last item of communications is the personnel report and substitute report as always. That's as, as an attached attachment in your the communication's been completed. I'll turn the meeting over to Chairman Neely with item number three. Item number three, approval of bills and plans. Need a motion. So be paid. Second. Second. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Mr. Item four, approval of the meetings from February 20 to 24, regular board meeting and approval of the meetings of for the March 5th, 2024 special board meeting. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisen? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes, on the regular meeting and no on the special due to absence. Okay. Uh, item 5 of approval of BG4 for the Jackson County Central Office Administrative Building re roof Project. KDE approved. Review and approved. We have a motion. So we approve it. Second. Second. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisen? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, we be. Item 6 approved with the BG5 for the Sand Gap Elementary School Reroute and H HVAC Project pending KDE review and approved. We have a motion. Motion. Second. Ms. Heisen? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nixon? Yes. Item 7, approval of the BG uh, for the Jackson County Middle School Safety Investment Project, uh, P 
opinion of KDE, you can approve the motion. Motion. Second. Second. Mr. Higgs. Yes. Mr. Salem. Yes. Mr. Nicholson. Yes. Ms. Heisman. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Item 8, approval of the BG-5 for the Tyner Elementary School re-roof and wizard project. Replacement project pending KDE review and approval. Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen. Yes. Ms. Nicholson. Yes. Mr. Higgs. Yes. Ms. Heisman. Yes. Yes, me. Uh -oh. Item 9, approval to, to advertise for annual bids for 2024. 2025 school year, Mr. Smith. You'll shoot that on the screen camera. I'll just briefly go through those. Pending board approval, we'll be advertising for these different bids. Banking, diesel, gas, foreign security, fire extinguisher, pest control, petroleum products, propane, range hood extinguishers and sprinkler systems, school pictures, and mowing. So again, pending board approval, Ms. Masters will advertise and we'll solicit bids uh, for these things. Okay, I don't mind the motion. Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Yes, for me. Item 10, approval to advertise for bids for the food service items <coughs> for the Jackson County Public Schools Food Service Department for the 2024 and 2025 school year. Motion? Motion. Second. Second. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 11, approval <coughs> to of the statement of authority for the Jackson County Public School System Food Program. Motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 12, approval of the procurement, service, procurement certification of the community eligibility provision for the eligibility and dependent steps for the Jackson County Public School System Food Service Program for the 2025 and 2024 and 2025 school year. Let's see, I just done that. Okay. I just done it. 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 I just Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, for me. Okay. You got the wrong place there. That was a mouthful anyway. He was. That's a lot. Item 13, approval of a memorandum or agreement between the Western Kentucky University and the Jackson County Public Schools. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. yes. Item 14, approval of the section 125 flexible spending benefit plan. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Item 15, approval to renew our existing plan for the student accident incident and insurance. With uh, Roberts Insurance for the 2024 and 2025 school year. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nibbles? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Yes, for me. Item 16, approval of the education professional service agreement between the Teach for America Incorporated and the Jackson County Board of Education. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 17, approval of memorandum of agreement with Midway University Teacher Education Program and the Jackson County Board of Education. Any motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 18, approval to establish and reestablish positions. Any motion? Second. Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 19. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. After I went back and looked at it, on the fundraisers, I had one question. I thought we discussed back a while back that on academics we would fund all travel forms. And I'd oh, seen I would that. just pay for it. 
All the mileage. What about the for? driver? We don't pay for that. All the mileage is paid for by Fort Policy. All the mileage. I, I thought, well, when I, I was, I thought it was to cover their trip, driver, the, bus, fuel. I've got that, the policy right okay. here if you want to see it. Well, can, is that something we can maybe review? Do it right now if you want to. I, I feel like if we're going to give them a bus and some fuel, we should pay for the driver. It says the board will provide mileage, cost, and no charge for the academic team trips for schools. Schools will be responsible for paying driver expense only. Mm -hmm. That was board approved on. Mm -hmm. I don't have the date, but that's I remember doing it. Okay. Set, uh, July the 19th, 2016. So, oh, so we can amend that when we do our policy updates. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I'm fine with doing it. But is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So item 19, approval of fundraisers. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Item 20, approval of the field trip and motion. Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, for me. Uh, item 21, everybody sign in for public comment. Item 22, approval to enter into executive session as permitted by the KRS 61 8 Need a motion? Motion. Second. Can I get a second? Second. And Mr. Higgs? What? But yes. Yeah, okay. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisen? Yes. Yes, for me. <laughs> Item 23, <laughs> approval to return to regular session. Move we approve the regular session. Second. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisen? Yes. Yes, I make a motion effective July 1st, 2024. We declare the office of superintendent vacant. Second. Uh, Mr. Higgs? Yes. At this time. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Hassan? No. No for me. Item 24, approval to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Higgs? Yes. Yes for me.